The mission of Operation Conversation Cops and Kids is to help build respect and trust and improve the relationship between police officers and inner city youth. Its workshops include performance, improvisation, and yes, conversation. Here's a look at one of those candid meetings between officers and teenagers. Not having a father around for me is hard because my mother has 10 to 6 kids and I know from my point of view it was hard because he wasn't there for me graduation. Right about like just like little moments that you hear about with other people who join with both their parents, you kind of feel left out in the world when you don't have that other half. And you only have just your mother who could who tries her hardest to fill those shoes. It's just not the same. I can't even imagine what you're feeling because my father, my father is a huge impact in my life. He, uh, I love my father to death. I, I am who I am because of him. I couldn't imagine not growing up without him. A lot of times uh, at work, say especially if you're in a busy precinct, um, you might come into a lot of heavy jobs, things that just happen, you know, things that you wouldn't wish anybody to see or experience. When you go home, you got to cut it. Right there, because if not, if family anyway, every time you go out the door, they might be worried about you. Operation Conversation Cops and Kids is run by the All Stars Project and was created by developmental psychologist and community activist Dr. Lenora Fulani. She is here today along with Adeleke Sede Bamouche, who has been a part of the program since he was a teenager. Thank you both for being with me. Thank you. I know how wonderful the All Stars Project, uh, All Stars Project is. I had a chance to host your big fundraiser earlier this year and I was so impressed. You were fantastic. Uh, but you were very kind. <laughs> really, the youngsters were fantastic. Yes. Uh, and, and this, of course, is, is one part of the program that has been extremely successful. Um, it's been around now since... 2006. And this was shortly after the Sean Bell shooting. Absolutely. Yeah. And initially, um, the organization Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement, um, were the key participants from the um, police side mm -hmm. and then in 2011 we signed a partnership um, because of the uh, agreement with the then Commissioner Ray Kelly mm -hmm. and we've continued that under Commissioner Bratton who has um, vigorously adopted yeah. <laughs> uh, the program and has been very supportive. Which says a lot about the value of this program and about how successful it is that the police uh, the police department recognized mm -hmm. you know the importance of, of signing on to this so explain if you will to the audience you know what it is that you do in these workshops in terms of, of facilitating a better understanding between the officers on the street and, and young people mm -hmm. well one of the things that we've discovered at the all-stars project which is a phenomenal after-school program that um, 10,000 kids participate in around the country each year is we made this startling discovery about the uh, capacity of performance mm -hmm. to transform relationships between people and have people see each other in ways that in ordinary conversation they just can't do. So basically we bring, I bring cops and young people together and um, they do things like they do a warm-up, which they all have all kinds of attitudes towards. <laughs> they don't quite know. And a lot of them not play acting, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they don't quite know what it is. And um, at some point in the workshop, we do this performance, which is um, improvisational and, I mean, basically silly. But mm -hmm. it's a performance. And in the midst of it, the cops start to laugh. Mm -hmm. The kids start to laugh, and it really humanizes one to the other, and it also helps to break through barriers, and they both go, oh, that's an another human being. Yeah. And it gives us an opportunity also because to have them recognize that they have a lot of things in common with each other from age, they're on the streets at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when most of us are in bed. And it's been very organizing in helping both the cops see the young people in a different light and uh, also vice versa. Yeah. Now, Adelaide Kate, you started the program 15. 
do you remember what your attitude was going in and, and how it changed? Oh, yes. Um, uh -huh. I remember... You're uh, 28 now. I'm just 28 to, now. Yeah. I remember being approached by Dr. Fulani and uh, she was letting us know that there was going to be um, this conversation that was going to happen between young people and uh, cops in the community. And I remember my reaction being something along the lines of, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> but you were obviously wrong. <laughs> I was obviously very wrong. In being part of the program, I learned quite a few things. Uh, one in particular is that, um, like Dr. Fulani said, um, we're humans, you know, on both sides. Um, we both have our fears and we have, you know, ways in which we view things. But until the conversation is actually had, it's always going to be, uh, you know, young people see, you know, cops as demons and the, uh, the cops in our community see us as demons. And mm -hmm. until there's a conversation or a you know, that interaction between the two of us where we can actually say, oh, this, this person just wants to get home to their family. Yeah. This person just wants to, you know, go to the store and not be, you know, harassed or thinking something is going to happen, you know. Until that reaction or that, that interaction happens, it's, it's just going to be hostile. So, what re let me tell you, ask you, what feedback have you gotten from police officers about how talking with these youngsters face to face change them and the way they approach their job even the way they approach young people on the street when the spring of 2013 we did a survey and in response to the question of did either group learn something something like 80 percent of the kids said yes they did learn something new mm -hmm. and 66 percent of the cops said they did and in response to the question of do you think this is going to impact on the communication between cops and kids? 100% of the kids said yes, <laughs> and 93% of the officers did. And so I think that's a real statement, um, and I think it carries throughout the work that we do. I think both officers and young people come into that uh, initial workshop, and they're not quite sure what's going to happen, but they're moved by it and organized by it. And I guess one thing I also wanted to say, which I think we often miss, is that the police in our communities have this job of basically navigating all of the fallout from institutions that don't work, from the school system that is a mess, actually, even mm -hmm. though people won't be straight about that. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> people don't have jobs. It's, it's very, very difficult. They're dealing in poor communities where young people and their families are struggling, and their job is to keep order. And that, that's set up in opposition to each other. It's a conflict, and yeah. it's very difficult to achieve. It's a, and, and it sounds like Conversation Cops and Kids is making inroads into yes. trying to, to, to bridge that gap. Well, one thing that uh, people often think is that the cops and kids have irreconcilable hostilities and mm -hmm. differences, but one of the more moving um, moments in a workshop is when cops say things like, you know, I don't know when I leave home if I'm going to be able to return, and the kids make that, make a similar statement. Mm -hmm. Or young people say, you know, uh, I won't leave my house without making sure that everything is okay with my mom, I give her a kiss and we, I won't have an argument because they don't know if they're coming back. So they sort of discover that they're, that they're dealing with very similar situations. And I think it just goes so far in humanizing, as I said, both to the other, mm -hmm. and they're recognizing that they can do some things together and it doesn't have to be in opposition to each other. All right. We are unfortunately out of time. Wonderful program. And if folks go to allstars.org, yes. they'll be able to learn out more about Conversation Cops and Kids, as well as some of the other wonderful programs uh, that All Stars uh, promotes yes. uh, and runs. And if you're interested in having Cops and Kids a conversation in your own community, they can find that information out as well. And sign up. Okay. All right. Thank you both for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. Best of luck and continued success. Thank you so much.